Peace. This video is more of a service announcement than anything. The other day, I said on Facebook that bees are the cows of the insect world. And the reason why I said that is because bees have the ability to provide us with so many things that are beneficial. First of all, if all of the bees were to die on the planet Earth right now, bees basically account for 75% of the food that's on your plate. 75%, all right? Which means vegetables, fruit, any kind of plant life, grains, generally somewhere down the chain of command, a bee had something to do with the pollination of the foods we eat. So we can't allow the bees to die or else we're going to have 75% less food. That's like cutting out one and a half of your lungs. One lung, take it out. Then cut off a half of what's left from the one lung and try to breathe with that. That will be the amount of food that we'll have to eat on each plate if we don't have bees. So bees are very important. Bees have this kind of electrical energy in their wings. They vibrate so fast that they produce electricity. So any being that's producing excessive electricity has to be radiating some form of energy because electricity is a form of radiant energy, but it has to radiate along certain paths, you know? It has to take a path. It's not radiant like the sun. It follows rules, you know, or it's, it's limited. But it's very powerful. Other day, I got a chance to have some Manuka honey. And, you know, it was a very good experience. You know, I had it with some Ceresi tea. And, boy, it was like it was like a meal by itself. You know what I mean? Manuka honey energizes. I don't know what it does. It just did something to me. I can't. I can't explain. But I say that to say that there are so many beneficial products that come from bees. Now, bee was very important to the ancient pharaoh for some reason. The Kemetic dynastic era, bees had a lot to do with rulership and divinity. They were carved into stone as symbols of divinity and rulership. It's just very interesting that the pharaoh is how, I, be, I believe he was called Nsu Beti. Right? B-T-Y. But T, I believe, is the B. I'm not sure because I, I forgot. It's been a while. But there was always a, a, an association with the B and some awesome power that was wielded by the Pharaoh. Now, we do know that a lot of these ancient civilizations were fertility cults. Not only sexual fertility, but fertility of the land was very important. Land management was important to the ancient wise souls as well as water management. These, as a matter of fact, the Egyptians or the people of Kemet were known as the first environmentalists on the planet Earth. But when we dig a little deeper, we also find out that the Vedic science of yagya or sacrifice, any sacrificial ritual you do on the planet Earth for Lord Vishnu will have some form of beneficial effect on the environment. As such, you know, the other day I asked y'all to light a candle. A lot of people lit these paraffin cam candles, you know. The regular candle wax that we get at the store, a lot of us lit that. And that's, that's normal because that's what's available. It's not the best. There's some side effects with paraffin that are very subtle. But there can be some health risks involved with paraffin candles. because I believe they're based on petroleum. So this is a processed, and then there's, a, there's another form of processed candle called soybean candle, which is not as harmful as the paraffin wax, the regular wax you see in the candle stores, but it doesn't have any real beneficial effects. And then there's this funny animal called the bee, who I call the cow of the insect world. Now, the bee is very interesting because some people say that honey is bee vomit, and it might be. But the thing about honey that's interesting is that um, antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, so molds, bee honey never rots. Honey never rots. It can't get molds. It can't get any viruses in it. What does that sound like? It sounds just like cow dung. So we got two, we have an association that when you have a cow, 
Now, I'm going to tell you what's interesting about that cow dung. The cow dung is so rich. We're talking about a protected cow. We're not talking about the cows that you eat at McDonald's or the cows that you see in the supermarket. Those cows are fed other cows. A cow is a natural vegetarian or vegan, whatever you want to call it, but it doesn't eat flesh. And they're actually mixing up either fish or cow remains or other animal remains in their feed. And they're feeding it to cows and you eat that. So cows that go to the market have a lot of tumors in their body because they're not eating a natural diet, you know. And as such, you know, a lot of us do have those cancer products in our body. Even right now, even a vegetarian, you know, it still takes a while for your body to detoxify. There's no guarantee it's going to come back 100% once you damage your body from eating dead flesh, especially cow's flesh. So the dung that comes from these protected cows, for example, people, the next question is, where would I find a protected cow? At a Hare Krishna farm. So these, the dung is real pure. It's raw. Earth. It's just like dry earth, basically. But when you burn cow dung, even as a part of a Vishnu ritual sacrifice, it has a positive effect on the environment. When you burn, again, soybean doesn't have a positive effect, but it doesn't have a negative effect. We call it a neutral effect. But when you burn beeswax, beeswax is the only wax that's not processed. It's made from God, basically. God created beeswax in the form of bees. And the thing about beeswax is that it releases negative ions in the air. Now, negative ions attach themselves to toxins or pollutants in the air. They lock on, they fall to the ground. So people who have allergies or asthma, like you could burn a paraffin candle wax and maybe it's face will break out or your skin will break out or you'll cough or something you'll have some adverse effect but when you burn this beeswax i'm so thankful for this beeswax when you burn this it actually cleans out the air it'll help you if you got asthma and all of that so yeah it could and it's scent it's unscented it's hypoallergenic and of course there's in this whole thing you don't have any bacteria you don't have any viruses no mold, no fungus. So I recommend that at least get some negative ions in your environment. Negative ions are also produced when friction, you know, friction, rubbing back and forth, you know, like water over a stream, a bed of stones, rustling leaves in the wind, on the trees, a shower. Shower can lift up your health, your spirit, your energy, because there's negative ions being released. So remember, when it comes to human health, negative is the way to go. You want to be negative, okay, when it comes to human health. Negative ions, negative drug tests, negative for diseases. You want to be negative when it comes to certain things. And you want to be positive with other things. But generally, the earth has a positive charge. So what happens is when there's a lightning storm, all the lightning causes the ions in the air to be charged with a negative charge. Negative and positive attracts. So then all of these toxins that are in the air, they also attach. They're generally positively charged, positive ions. Radiation, electromagnetic radiation coming off your fridge, your microwave, your television, your cell phone, um, your dryer, anything that has electricity, air conditioner, your Wi-Fi. These are kicking off positive ions. So positive ions are also the charge of toxins or pollutants in your air. Things like beeswax turns you in negative ions. Things like lightning storms, things like um Himalayan salt candle, um salt candles, salt objects in your house, those can also release negative ions. So we're looking for more negative ions. Um, Vishnu sacrifice, any form of sac sacrifice for Vishnu burning cow dung or ghee together releases oxygen, as mentioned before, as well as like they burn Palo Santo. All of these things are there. The Florida water is a different version, but yeah, all of these things are there and they have a positive effect on your environment. So again, get your, get the right, get any kind of beeswax, but make sure it's pure, the purer the better. And what's very interesting is that Krishna himself, you know, every time I went to the Ratha Yatra, Krishna always came down in the form of a bee because that's actually the form he comes to collect the nectar of devotional service. 
I've had witnesses to this, you know what I'm saying? People who could testify to this fact that every time we have a Ratha Yatra in Manhattan, Krishna, uh, bees, these giant bumblebees come down and they're surrounding us when we're taking the deities off the carts and we're making all this music, got all these flowers and you got these garlands and it's a lot of activity and prasadam being distributed. Always a bee comes around us, circles around us. Because what happens is they say... If you're fortunate enough to come across a bona fide spiritual master and that spiritual master decides to show his mercy, his or her mercy upon you, they plant a seed in your heart. The seed is called Bhakti Lata Bij. And this Bhakti Lata Bij is the seed of devotional service, pure devotional service. So when you mature, when this uh, creeper in your heart grows, this little plant in your heart, and it reaches through seven heavens, and it goes into the spiritual world, etc., etc. It's picked up by Radharani. Srimati Radharani is in tune with all devotees because all living entities, every soul is a devotee of the Lord on some level, in some shape or fashion, in their original eternal capacity. We are all devotees and servants. We have a place in the spiritual universe. We have a place, all right? We have a purpose that's eternal. We've forgotten it, and we're in this world of darkness. But when Sri Mati Radharani sees your seed of devotional service pop up in the spiritual world, it's like a plant, like a, like a honeysuckle. And she's look, Krishna, a devotee, a pure devotee has popped up. And Krishna's like, where, where? She's like, right there. So Krishna then comes in the form of a bee down to your state of existence to absorb that nectar. Because a bee is different from a fly. A fly is attracted to filth, corpses, pus, produces maggots. B, you never see a bee go around a dead body, but you never see a fly collecting nectar either. You know what I'm saying? Like there's different food for different species and you will gravitate toward the food that is akin to your nature. You know what I'm saying? Everyone is being influenced by their nature. You know what I'm saying? If you like to make videos about sex all the time, then your nature is more towards the lower chakras. I've been through those stages, so I know, you know what I'm saying? And if you like to do intellectual videos, then you're going more towards what? The upper three chakras, from the throat to the eye to the crown. And if you're more into heart or home, or if you're more into um, appetite or material things, like, you know, the beauty of life around you, then you're more centered in the middle chakra region. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to say... uh. Krishna will come in the form of a bee. Bees are very, very important. Remember that. Protect these bees. Wherever you have a bee and you have cows, remember the cows bring the fertile soil. Things grow, you plant things. When the bee comes into the picture now, he's giving you honey, he's giving you bees wax to clean your environment, and he's making more fruits, flowers, and vegetables come. It's a win-win situation. Protect the bee. And remember, the bee is a very important symbol of devotional service. So therefore, anybody who has been kind enough to put me on to beeswax or, you know, give me beeswax, may they be blessed too. It's only right. You know what I mean? Because I think that a bee is a very, very valuable thing. So I like to just... um. Leave y'all with those thoughts. And look up, if you want to look up some of Krishna's pastimes concerning bees. Well, it's very important. Look up Madhava. M-A-D-H-A-V-A. -A -A. Madhava. Krishna Madhava. He's always associated with sweetness and honey. He's because the nature, like, it's hard to describe being in the presence of of a person who exudes sweetness without even speaking, just their energy. It's like, yo, this person is mad cool. Whatever level you on with God, I mean, it could be a sexual level, it could be a parental level, it could be a brotherly friendship level, it could be neutral, but whatever relationship you have with Krishna, it's always going to exude some form of sweetness. It's going to always leave some sweet residue because it's his nature. It's different, you know, so internally, his energy is called Hladini Shakti, H-L-A-D-I-N-I, -I, 
Shakti, S-H-A-K-T-I. Hladini Shakti, that's the pleasure potency of God. And it's manifested outwardly to our eyes in, in the past times that we know of as Radharani. So the internal part of Krishna is naturally sweet because it's the sweetest divine feminine in the universe is his internal. That's just how the energy flows. Of course, once we start trying to interpret that with the material mind and relate it to our existence, then we're going to see things the wrong way. So don't. So in other words, what you're thinking right now, just pause because it's not that what I'm trying to say. All right? Matter of fact, um, sometimes the sweetest people are the most valiant people, you know? The most brave, the wisest people, and the most courageous people can be the sweetest people. And then, like, you know, people who are outside, arrogant, tough, rash, harsh, those can be the the darkest people on the inside. You know, no sweetness. But yeah, I like to top off this this video with, of course, my favorite mantra. I ask you to chant it if you can or read about it, or just share it with somebody. This is the age where, especially in this month, you get so many blessings for doing little good deeds. You know what I mean? So, always when you get a chance, chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And be blessed forevermore. Thank you for watching the vids. Good like, comment, and rate. Peace out.